Hi there, this is Brad Wardell, and I'm playing the pre-beta version. According to this, it's version 0.001. We haven't given it a version number at this point, which we're going to have to pretty soon, of Elementor, Elemental Fall Enchantress Legendary Heroes. And, uh, yeah, is that a mouthful? So, uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the things that are in the beta. And bear in mind, uh, these are things that... Uh, I'm going to be criticizing the game as I play it because I'm going to pass this on to the team. So uh, you're going to see some of the some bugs. You're going to see things that we're going to change before release. So remember, this isn't a marking video. This is a playing a beta video. <laughs> so I'm going to play as Kazan the Black. This is a champion that I made, my own uh, sovereign here. And I'm going to play on a new huge map. This is a, a new feature in Legendary Heroes where we basically were able to optimize the engine to the point where the map size is uh, getting... I don't even know how much bigger it is than uh, large. I think it's four times larger, but I could be wrong. There's a bunch of other options. I don't know how many of these are new. Number of opponents. Pop up to 11. Now every time you create your own Sovereign, you can play against them in a future game. And so uh, that's one of the, my favorite features of the game is that the game gets better and better as you play it because the units you create and the sovereigns you create and any modding you do or whatever ends up being used by the computer AI against you later so the game kind of evolves as you get better at the game so let's see how this goes and here we are now one of the things that's new let me zoom in here is you don't start completely alone you have some followers with you and we did this to kind of get things moving uh, a little bit better at the beginning of the game now um, some users have been requesting this for a while I think uh, let's see oh it's not working or I don't there we go if you hold your mouse button or if you just sit there for a minute it will now show you your path Oops. So you can go and just see, just hold it down and you'll see, oh, it takes two turns to get here. So a lot of users were requesting this for a long time. Um, another thing you'll notice is that there's shadows on this. Now one of the things that's not in this beta, but and this is an interesting thing so about uh, development, shadows aren't free. But we want to have all this stuff you see here have shadows as well. And uh, a lot of this can be what we call baked in, but they're not in yet. So let's see if I go to options. Yeah, they're not even in yet. So, um, the uh, in the beta, this will actually look a lot better than it does here because all this stuff will have shadows. So try to ignore that for now. Now I don't really, normally I'd hit Control N because I didn't get any. In fact, I'm going to hit Control N <laughs> because I'm a, a cheater and I want a different stop. I don't know. I got, we actually stole Control N from Civilization, though. In case anyone's wondering, why do we happen? to do that. We stole it back in the Civ 4 days and it went into Gal Civ and then we put it uh, into all of our other games since then. And the idea is that if you don't like the start you get, well, since you're going to be investing a lot of time into the game, get go ahead and hit Control N until you get the start you want. Alright, so here's a different one. And uh, I like this much better. So I have uh, 4 grain, which determines how big my city is ultimately going to get three uh, materials and two uh, three materials determines how fast it produces things and then essence is kind of like uh, your wild card it determines how many enchantments you can put on a city and I don't know I think I'm gonna go with this right on this very spot actually so I'm playing as the Empire who are kind of the bad guys so uh, you're going to be seeing this won't be all pretty. The land, I actually kind of murder the land as I expand, so it's going to become this ugly purplish look. Though a lot of people I know do like it, so I apologize in advance. So there's a goodie hut there. Vile poison. Okay, that could come in handy. So here's my city here. Now, one of the things that's another thing we've changed is that growth is now determined by how much food excess food you supply you have so the more food you have the faster your city will grow which kind of makes sense I click on my city and I go to grain you see I have four grain that grain comes uh, 70 food 
because it's 25 per grain population is 30 so I have right now 70 excess food and that means um, it will increase how fast my population grows so I'm gonna go ahead and put some spells on this city depression I uh, will increase my productivity so I went from 18 to 21 there and uh, which I like and meditation which uh, that gives me ma one mana per essence I'm going to go ahead and I, I can, can I train a pioneer? It costs 30 population, which will slow me down. We're still messing around with this because in uh, we don't like what we call pioneer spam. And the idea is that um, this is something I really like in Civilization 5 and to a lesser degree 4, but I think 5 uh, nailed this. And that is there were other strategies in Civ 5 to do than to just crank out a bunch of settlers. Now in this case, I want to build a Tower of Dominion because you no longer, in, um, we have this concept called champions, and these are these really powerful units that are around the map. Well, in Fallen Enchantress, they're around the map. Now you have to collect them through fame, and there's two ways of getting that. One are through buildings you're building your civilization, such as this Tower of Dominion here. So when that gets done building, um, what will happen is that I... Uh, uh, when I get done building, it'll start accruing fame. Fame attracts uh, champions. And you'll see that in a minute. So here's my tech tree. I always go with civics. And we haven't done a lot of changes to this other than balance. But one of the things it does do, uh, the tech tree now gives you what we call ongoing projects for cities. Because one of the most annoying things in Fallen Enchantress that players reported is, and I don't want to be bad about Fallen Enchantress, it's a good game, but they're obviously a, it's, a new, it's a new game, and people say, hey, well, what about this, what about that? And that was, what do you do at the end of a turn? If I don't want cities that are just idle doing nothing. And so now we have these projects where um, I can just tell them to go and build stuff. So if I get, let's go back to knowledge, I can now have a city just produce knowledge at the end of a turn if I wanted to do that. I'm going to do civics because it will allow me fast build and I uh, chose a sovereign with lots of money. Now I don't know how many of you follow this stuff but this is the frame rate counter. This is because of fraps which I'm using to record this but uh, even though the graphics are dramatically improved and we have real-time shadows and all that the f performance is actually better and that was because uh, we actually think Intel for a lot of that. Um, so let me show you the battles. Uh, here's uh, this is something you'll notice right away is the tackle battles have changed a little bit. You now get into battles fast, which some people will like. Uh, I may not like at the end of this. Let's see, wither, curse, target has no defense. I'm going to do that so I can kill. Oh crap! It's going to take a turn. <laughs> Oh, you may have seen this, but uh, we're going to actually make it more apparent. If you, you can, oh, I don't mean to do that. Um, if you have two units that are adjacent, you call, now have swarm, where adjacent units will also attack. So if I won the battle, yay, I got some experience, not enough to go up a level, but that was actually a little bit uh, tougher than I thought it was going to be. But by clearing the layer, I get uh, one fame. So my fame has just gone up to one, which means a champion will come sooner. Ooh, and I want... Let's go to the equipment. Do I want this? Four defense. I've already got seven. Now slow me down. See, the... My initiative is 18 with... Oh, that's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and take that. But I almost died there, so I'm not going to mess with these guys. So let's see. Do I want to build that next? No, I am going to go. Well, I haven't found any other. I don't want to build a pioneer. 
because it'll keep me from getting to level two, level two. Um, going up levels with your cities matters a lot. If you train pioneers, they slow down your uh, uh, rate of growth and uh, by uh, I mean, they, they consume population. And so that is something you really don't want to be doing early in the game. Ooh, that looks nice. This is actually, uh, I just noticed this. This just, just got checked in. They've been improving the graphics across the board. Normally you play it like this. I just like to play it a little bit closer than probably most people. All right, so I've just gone up a level. This is something that's changed. So uh, and we're going to be making it, we'll probably be changing this text around to be a little bit, little bit more clear, but um, these are my different paths. The assassin's really good for people who like to use ranged weapons. Defenders are your tank. Uh, governor, uh, this will probably, this may still change. Uh, we may turn this into a general or an overlord. We're, we're still not sure, but the idea is that they're good for uh, either if you park them in a city or if they're in charge of a lot of units. Uh, mage, uh, pretty self-explanatory, and this is your damage guy. I'm going to choose Defender. And I usually do, but that's just my style. I, I, I'm the guy who plays uh, the Paladin in World of Warcraft, so that tells you a little bit. Alright, that just uh, made me a little tougher. Now, there's uh, normally more cues on the map. I just have them turned off because I don't like... Uh, I already know that this is a quest and this is a monster hut, but they, the game will display what they are if you don't know. So what do we got here? Can I take these guys? Uh, well, I'm demoing it. If I lose this battle, forgive me. But as you can see, they start right over. Now, if I had had ranged units, the ranged units don't start that close. They would start further back here. Uh, so it's not quite, but if you're in a melee unit, you're into the battle instantaneously. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. It makes you make a little bit, a few more decisions here. So I'm going to go ahead. See, he swarmed me, he's trying to swarm me again. Man, I suck. There we go. All right. So I got more fame. I'm getting closer. All right. I'll get more experience. I might be able to level up. So now I've leveled up two levels or another level, and so I can choose. Uh, these are my. This is my general track. So it has like two little pages. You see this divider, and then this is my defender track. So I could do things like. Increase my weight. Hmm. I'm gonna ask. Have to ask that I get to see uh, some stats here, because I want to know if this. So here's an example. The armor proficiency will increase my weight capacity. What I want to know is whether it'll increase my initiative, and so it's not displaying it there. So that's something I would want to see changed. Uh, potential. A lot of people like potential. I not. I happen to be in the curve that I've done the spreadsheets on this. People think this is overpowered. Potential makes it so that more experience will help you go up faster. But there's a downside to it is you're not nearly as tough early on. So there's another example of strength. Let's see, initiative, tinker. I am going to choose initiative. Or. Oh no no shadow bolt. So now I have the ability to cast Shadow Bolt, which is nice. So here's a Lost Library. Oh, sorry, I just skipped the uh, cutscene. So I have now reached sufficient fame for a, for a champion to come to me. And two, so two champions come, and I only get to pick one. They demand I choose between them. So on this guy, his abilities, these cracks, which is nice. Uh, it means he's really good at defense. And uh, endurance, which, so he's basically this is just a tough guy, but he has no magic, as you can see. He's just he's just a warrior. This uh, she, on the other hand, she's Quendar, which is basically an evil, uh, a, a very evil elf. They're called blood elves. Uh, they're very anti. They're very magical. In this case, death and fire. Oh, I could use. 
I can do that. I'm going to pick her because that might come in handy. And I'm going to send her over here back to my city. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is so that uh, uh, basically when you put a champion in your city, it lowers your unrest. And unrest is sort of like a hidden tax on everything you're trying to do in your city. And the downside of having a bunch of champions with you is that it lowers you have to share your experience amongst them and the more champions you have the more the nastier that uh that shared experience in other words if you're the only sovereign slash champion that goes into a battle you gain a lot of experience on that you and it's for you but if you have a bunch of champions in there then you're sharing it amongst them and it becomes and it, you can really slow down how fast you move it makes it easier to win a battle obviously but you don't gain experience nearly as fast so i'm going to go ahead and uh, choose restoration and I wish I had a healing potion. And I, what I also need to do is I need to find a good, some good places to, uh, to put pioneers. Now, there's a resource here. This will prove, if I put a uh, pioneer here, this, uh, my city will get more resources. So, by the way, another thing, notice that the turn button is yellow. You, it now tells you, you have idle citizens that could be doing something this turn. So it's a good warning that, hey, go and check. Now we've gone back and forth on whether we should go to Civ 5 route and force you to make your city doing something uh, before you can even do a turn. But now that we've we ended up going with just communicate to the player very obviously that something's going on. Now I'm going to go, let's see what I can build here. I have plenty of money still, even though I'm, I'm losing a little bit of money per turn. I've got seven fame, but I'm not gaining any fame per turn. I am... I'm going to go ahead and do the pioneer... Th oh, it has gone up a level. I am going to do the merchant thing. Oh, and the city just went up. All right, so uh, we will be improving this uh, description quite a bit. Fortresses basically uh, produce stuff a lot faster towns produce a lot more money conclaves do a lot more research and they each have their own set of unique uh, city improvements you can build I usually go with conclave as my first city because um, by doing that I those early texts are so crucial but some people prefer to go with production if you're trying to rush your other players like if I was playing on a small map and I want to rush the other players, I probably would have picked Fortress. So it just depends on what your strategy is. By the way, this is all going to look a lot better by probably for the beta when all the uh, the shadows are in. It's just they're not in yet. So uh, when you look at games, you'll notice that there's two types of shadows. There's the shadows that are on these guys here, right? And then you have the shadows that are on the uh, background on these kinds of things. And it's just, it's just a tricky thing um, to do right. Here's a goodie hut. So it's back to being. Now I'm going to go ahead and train that pioneer because I'm level two. All right. Now I'm going to pick knowledge. And I'm going to also tell it to build a workshop. By the way, you can also double click on this stuff. Watch. If you want a fast way to do it. All right. Healing nectar. Well, now I don't need it. And then, you know, I haven't run into anyone yet, which is, that's how big this map is. I mean, I've already, this is all I've researched or covered, uncovered so far of this whole thing. So it's a pretty big map. This is a map for if you want to play for many weeks. Okay, I definitely want this. I, this is a good place for a second city, so my job will be to uh, make sure no one else gets it, even if I have to kill them. Practice Sword is nice, because Practice Swords give you, uh, it's nine attack, but I also get a little bit of experience. And there's a in here, so I'm going to go check that out. And I'm going, not going to send her out by herself, so let's see. How long will it take her to get here? Eight turns. Nine turns.
All right, so this is a quest. He'll give me this really cool unit if I uh, if I take care of his problem. Well, that shouldn't be. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm gonna get killed if I do that this early. So I will wait until I have more people. All right, I'm gonna pause and I will come back when I have a little bit more, so you're not being getting too bored. Okay, a little bit of time has passed. Now, uh, a couple of things I want to point out that we're still getting 30 frames a second. This is I'm running at eight times anti-alias, and I remember doing these demos back you know, during the beginning of Fallen Enchantress, and I would always run with anti-alias off because I could never record video and uh, be doing all this stuff at once. So uh, another thing I want to show you guys, this is a something I take pride in because it's uh, it has to do with the computer AI. You see that? Little right there. Did you see how that turned well, just for a second? There isn't a please wait while all the players move. That's because our AI is multi threaded, and that means if you have a multi core system, the computer players think of their turns while you're moving. So, as a result, so if I hit the turn button, you see there, that's it, that's the whole thing. And, and in that time, 11 players moved. So that's one of the big advantages of a multi-thread computer AI is that you're not waiting for a long time for the computer players to move and it allows the AI to be a lot smarter than it would normally be in a typical game of this type. Though if you talk to players, they'll say the AI is terrible, I'm sure, but um, it's all it's all relative. They make mistakes, but they're, it's overall it's pretty good. Now, I think I can take this guy. Wait. I don't think I can take that guy, so we're just going to kind of meander back. But I have to make some tough, uh, I'm going to have to make some tough decisions here because oops, I should have been paying attention. Mounted Warfare, and uh, yeah, crap. This is, this will probably not go well, so I'm being attacked by an assassin demon. And he is on me right away again. Except I have Shadow Bolt. Which is overpowered. And don't say it's not for those you play who know the game. It's overpowered. Because I get to do this every turn. Ooh, this is not going to end well. Did he just... Oh, I screwed. Okay. He's cursed for touching me. Oh! Crap. Alright, so he killed my little army over here. Now, you don't. the game's not over. My guy gets sent back home to recover. So, one of the, what I was saying is the, it, the wilds get more dangerous to further spread out. So, I could just send a pioneer over here, settle a city, but now I'm going to have a lot of bad guys in between. I really need to start thinking about uh, I really need to start thinking about uh, you know, fortifying what I've got. So I'm going to go and I'm going to train. I'm going to try designing my own unit because I've got some unique resources here. Let's try it. There, I like the way she looks. So there's her weapon. Bloodthirsty is always good. I want something that gives her initiative so she moves fast, because that matters now. And it's a plus three attack. It's against things that have lower initiative. Her initiative is pretty good. Base is 20, fast. 70% encumbrance, minus two. So if I give her strength. I'm still encumbered enough to lose two. Darn it. What can I do to... That's weight three. Oh, there we go. I'll just get rid of that. She's not as well defended, but she moves faster. So I'm going to call her... Oops, hang on.
Avenger. Whoops. And give her. Now, let's see how she. Unfalling Legion. 8 attack, 8 defense, 8 hit points. 8 attack, 3 defense, 8 hit points, but 22 initiative versus 18. I'm going to go with her. Alright, so she's building. Or it's building a garden, and now I'm going to go ahead build an adventure here. And. Oh, they're going to be busy for a while. I really do want that other, another city over here. I still haven't run into anyone, which is remarkable, considering how many players I've got going. That makes me a little nervous. Can't train a pioneer, don't have enough people. I'm going to go ahead and rush that garden because I want my city to grow faster. So its growth is three right now. And. Oh, it didn't do any good. It's as high as it's going to get, looks like. I should have checked that. <laughs> Alright, I got horses now. That's awesome for me. I would get weaponry, but I don't have any special resources yet. Actually, what I should be doing is I need either metal or crystal. So to do that, I do need a pioneer. I, need, I should be researching to the south. I'm going to zoom out. Here's a cloth map. And there's a crystal trove right there. Metal. Metal. So I could I need to go either way. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that second Avenger. Oh, that's right. I can't train pioneer yet. Well, then I'm going to... Oh, and there's Altar, commanded by Prosopini in this case. So I'm going to see if I can... I know this is probably not smart because I got three champions, but I'm going to try to take, finish that quest. Oh, I didn't realize I was in such bad shape. I forgot. Flame tongue? Only has one range. That's two fire damage, that's nothing. You run away. And you... I'll have you take one shot. Oh, not even... So now I have gotten some of that. I will be able to go back to the alchemist. All right. Oh, and she just went up. I'm going to have her be an assassin because she has a really cool ranged weapon. And now I have my Ophidian, which is nice. But I'm going to send the other guy back. All right, so I have that Fidian now. That's pretty good, but I really, I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush that Avenger. And now I have a decent little army, and I'm going to take out these guys. Or try to. So now I have this, look at that guy. I would not want to mess with him. And I have Shadow Bolt. What? 
Okay, this may not end as well as I thought. Hopefully this seems pretty tough. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> All right, and Kazan, my guy, has gone up another level. So let's see. Healer. I can definitely use that, especially right now. Now watch, my fame, my fame's at 47. Which is nice, and I'm going to, it's going to go up again. Oops, I'm out of moves. And, oh. Can I train? It hasn't gone up a level. I really need to go up a level before I uh, get another unit. Or before I train that. I, basically, again, you get a huge benefit from going up levels. So if I build up that Pioneer, that's a big downside for me. So I'm going to clear this. It gives me more fame. Burning Axe. Oh, I don't have anyone to trade it with. So in our case of where... As you can see here, because I have some range units are over here, they work out. But the AI is getting smarter about trying to flank you to get at those ranged units. So well, that's handy. And that's the end of that. So I really need that crystal. But I want to do that, I need a Pioneer. I just got trade, that will build roads between my cities. I'm going to choose mining to build up my production. So here's my here's my uh, conundrum. If I wait too long, someone else is going to take this, res these, this resource here. I really need the metal that's here, and I really need this crystal. That's three different Pioneers that I would need. So which one should I go for first? And I don't have a good answer for that. I'm going to... I don't know. <laughs> I don't... So I'm reading this, uh, or watching it. Oh, and there's another re place I can build stuff. Alright, town. I'm going to go with Fortress. Because I do have plenty of money right now. And I, what I need is production. So I'm 22 production. So that one, that city is doing 33. This city is doing 20. Even though this one's a lot bigger. So we're going to have you build a couple pioneers. This is new. All right, rescue the caravan. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we're going to oh all oh, crap. <laughs> I should have I should have uh, read that text. So I'm about to die. Here's a new feature. Uh, Impale, if I can get up here, I can actually stab two of them at once. Blindness. Troll warrior. And that didn't work. See up there flanking me. I, let's see if I can. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so I died. She got injured and lost an ear, so that means she's going to lose some dodge in the future. This is where most people would uh, do a save and reload. I'm not going to do that. 
because I'm on video. But well, that's pretty much the only reason. <laughs> I am going to build a forge here, though, so my units can get tougher. I really need better weapons. I'm basically running around with sticks. So that's where I am for now. Uh, there's a lot more to this. And I haven't gotten into the uh, improved... Uh, into the improved uh, diplomacy and other elements. So we'll talk to you soon.